Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is a scientific presentation about fetal cell resound could be benefit for physicians, especially radiologists. This is the first video in this video series about chorioamniotic separation. The first section is about embryology. What is the role of the fetal membranes in the pregnancy and birth? Fetal membranes or chorioamniotic membranes are one of the most intriguing tissues in the intrauterine cavity that are essential for protection of the fetus, maintenance of pregnancy, and as a signaler to initiate parturition. Developmentary fetal membranes are composed of two separate layers of tissues, a single cell of epithelial layer of Omnion that forms the innermost lining of the uterine cavity, bathed in the amniotic fluid and in constant touch with the fetus, and the outer chorion trophoblast layer that forms the fetal maternal interface barrier by lining the maternal decidua. The amniocorion layers are connected through a collagen rich extracellular matrix that contains amnion and chorion mesenchymal cells. The amnion and chorion fuse to become a single unit structure around the last or early second trimester to shape the intrauterine cavity. Fetal membranes age as gestation progresses and it is correlated with fetal development and growth. As longevity of the membranes approach its limited term, membranes show aging pathology or dysfunctions highlighted by inflammation. The inflammatory mediators from aging fetal membranes are among the key fetal biological signals to initiate parturition. As fetal membranes help to maintain pregnancy as well as promote parturition. Like all other tissues, fetal membranes start aging in utero and aging progresses during gestation. Premature senescence of fetal membranes leading to dysfunction is one of the reasons underlying primary premature rupture of membrane and preterm birth. What is the definition of chorioamniotic separation? The separation of chorion and amnion before 14 weeks of gestation is physiologically normal. The amnion and chorion usually fuse between 14 and 16 weeks and any chorioamniotic separation that persists after 16 weeks is uncommon and anomalous. What is the etiology? Chorioamniotic separation can occur spontaneously or after an intrauterine intervention such as amniocentesis, fetal blood sampling, and fetal surgery. Is there any differential diagnosis for chorioamniotic separation? The first differential diagnosis is amniotic bond syndrome, which is it has obvious findings and I think there is no difficulty to differentiate it. Amniotic dysmorphism defined as floating membranes with multiple intrauterine amniotic sheets which is not associated with fetal abnormalities and subchorionic hematoma the hematoma usually has internal echoes and is separated from the fluid inside the gestational sac by a thick bond of tissue. The vast majority of reported cases of CAS have been of pregnancies that were exposed to an invasive intrauterine procedure. The literature regarding spontaneous CAS is sparse and with only a small number of cases. CAS has also been associated with fetal aneuploidy, particularly trisomy 21, preterm delivery, premature rupture of membranes, and fetal growth restriction, and intrauterine fetal demise or miscarriage. This is the last reference that can be cited about chorioamniotic separation, which was published as 2016. It's a single center retrospective cohort study of women who were diagnosed with CAS beyond 17 weeks gestation from 2000 to 2013, about 14 years. 
CAS is the separation of Korean and Amnion lawyers by an unequate space. The exact distance between the two membranes to meet the criteria for CAS has not been clearly established, and there is no standardized classification for the severity based on the depths of the separation. The depths of separation is not accurate representation of the size of the separation since it depends on its overall shape and on how much of the cavity is involved. So according to this study, the cases were classified as mild, moderate or severe. Mild means CAS limited to a quarter of the uterine cavity, moderate between a quarter and half of the cavity and severe more than half of the uterine cavity. Also, they compared pregnancy outcomes of patients with CAS based on their gestational age at diagnosis, and they classified them as before versus after 24 weeks and the, their degree of severity, mild versus moderate or severe. Finally, they found that CAS is highly associated with greater than three-fourth increase risk of preterm delivery, the higher rate of preterm delivery was independent of other potential confounders such as maternal age, parity, obstetric history, and vaginal bleeding or subcoronic hematoma. Not only the rate of preterm delivery but also the overall rate of premature rupture of embrace and the overall rate of spontaneous preterm delivery were higher for patients with CAS. All cases of fetal aneuploidy with CAS had other abnormal findings on ultrasound such as cystic hygroma, great plexus cysts, and heart abnormality. But please pay attention to this important point. There were no cases of, of an abnormal karyotype with an isolated finding of CAS. There were no cases of intrauterine fetal demise in patients who were diagnosed with a CAS after 24 weeks. However, the rate of stillbirth was significantly higher for those cases that were diagnosed before 24 weeks. Even though it was not significant, there was a trend toward more cases of stillbirth in the moderate severe group than in mild group of CAS. There were no significant differences in pregnancy outcomes between spontaneous and iatrogen cases of CAS. However, there was a trend toward more cases of intrauterine growth restriction with spontaneous CAS than with iatrogenic CAS. The unfused amnion and chorion in the early second trimester as a sonographic marker of fetal abnormalities. It's also with data from maternal serum screening tests, concentration of human chorionic gonadotropin and its subunits are strikingly higher in the salomic cavity than elsewhere. And the obliteration of salomic cavity normally coincides with the fall in concentration of HCG at around 12 weeks of gestation. Delayed chorioamniotic fusion might represent one missing link between high HCG concentrations in the maternal serum and fetal drops trisomy 21 or Turner's syndrome. Now, final teaching points. If you encounter with a case of scorioamniotic separation, please pay attention to these teaching points. CAS after 14 and 16 weeks of gestation appears to be a useful sonographic sign of possible abnormal fetal development. Try to classify patient as mild versus moderate or severe. The rate of stillbirth is higher for those cases that were diagnosed before 24 weeks. Also, there is no significant differences in pregnancy outcomes between spontaneous and iatrogenic cases of CAS, but IUGR is seen more often with spontaneous CAS. Association of an isolated CAS and fetal aneuploidy is rare, but the rate of fetal aneuploidy is increased. There are other soft markers.
The simplicity of screening is a key feature of this marker as other signs of abnormal fetal development such as increased nocal translucency require much more experience and time to be adequately identified. The observation of a CAS after 14 to 16 weeks of gestation should prompt a careful and repeated sonographic search for additional fetal abnormalities by an experienced sonographer. In conclusion, CAS is significantly associated with preterm delivery and if diagnosed before 24 weeks, the rate of stillbirth is significantly higher. Given these findings, routine reporting of CAS should be considered and close clinical surveillance is warranted in the presence of this diagnosis. These are references I used for this presentation. The published date of this video is January 2022. I will try to publish a supplementary video if different content is published in the future, of course with God willing. If you like this video, please subscribe this channel. If you would like to get notification for the next videos, please press a small well if you have any questions or video suggestions please write in the comments thank you for your attention